Quick selections are fun because they allow you to quickly grab a large area or a large um, section of similar content. And they work similar to the way that you might use the lasso tool where you kind of want to make a big, kind of broad, sweeping motion really fast. But what's, what's cool about the quick selection tool compared to the lasso tool is that it's intuitive and Photoshop tries to figure out what you're trying to select and kind of helps you along the way. And so for this example here, I have an image of a totem pole and I've kind of desaturated the background so you can see the area that I was selecting, um, keeping in mind the whole image was, was fully colored, not just uh, the part I have highlighted here. And so when I just click, so I grabbed the quick selection tool and I just clicked on my workspace, I clicked somewhere in this little red bubble and Photoshop said all these pixels surrounding where you clicked had something in common, so you must be trying to select that area. Now it's not what I was trying to select because I'm trying to select the whole mouth of this creature. And so in order to get the whole mouth selected, I literally just had to click and move my mouse up slightly and then down slightly and Photoshop figured out I was trying to select the mouth and so if we take a look at the second example here um, I have a selection I just clicked and I had a selection of this this red area as I moved my cursor upward Photoshop started thinking and they were thinking well where is she going with this what is she trying to select and immediately it filled in all of the top part of the mouth and said you're trying to select the top part of the mouth but it didn't do the bottom. And so then I had to take my cursor and I just bumped it just slightly down, just not all the way down to the bottom, just slightly down. And Photoshop said, oh, you must be trying to get the bottom half of mouth now. And it filled in the bottom half. And quickly I made that selection. I could refine it, I could make it better. I, I missed part of the mouth over here. But the benefit of this quick selection tool is you can select large areas very quickly and there's some control over it. Photoshop's trying to figure out what you're trying to select and it's trying to help you along the way. Um, we're going to learn about adding and subtracting from selections, and so I'm going to give you a little preview of that. Um, but it's important for this tool in particular because when you add and subtract from selections, there's kind of a right way to do it. Um, newer versions of Photoshop, they are, they're becoming more and more intuitive in the things that you're doing. And so if you wanted to add to the selection, you shouldn't like unselect the mouth and try again. You should hold the shift key and you should expand the selection by clicking or clicking and dragging in more areas and Photoshop will add to your selection. And then most importantly, if Photoshop selects too much of your image and you're like, no, that's wrong, you shouldn't undo it and then try to do it again. Instead, if you push the option or the alt key, depending on your, uh, if you're on a Mac or a PC, um, you can erase or subtract from that selection. And as you do that, Photoshop is learning what part of the image kind of goes together and what part doesn't. And so I'll show you that when I jump to Photoshop next and we talk about the quick selection tool. So I have those images open that we've been using, random images here. I'm going to go ahead and reset my workspace because it's kind of gotten all over the place. And I want to talk about the magic wand tool. Specifically, I want to talk about the idea of how it can select large bodies of color or similar color. And you can use the tolerance and contiguous or not contiguous settings to kind of make um, Photoshop figure out what you want and what you don't want to select and then we'll talk about the quick selection tool which is it's one of my favorite selection tools because it will quickly allow you to select an area and then you can refine it and so later in our slideshow I'll talk about the idea of refining a selection whenever I refine a selection I use the the quick selection tool to make the rough selection and then I use the select and mask button which you can see up here on your options bar to refine that selection and so not all images are good for each type of selection. And so I might use the quick selection tool here on the ice cream, you can zoom in a little bit, if I was trying to select the ice cream instead of the background. If you push and hold, and in my version of Photoshop it is the fourth tool down on the tools panel, you will get a flyout menu that allows you to select the quick selection tool and the magic wand tool. I'm going to use quick selection tool first. And with it selected, if you were to click so I just clicked once. Photoshop will select a group or an area of your page and say, well, that's similar, and you probably wanted to grab the whole thing. Command-D or Control-D will deselect. If you click and then you drag, Photoshop will try to start figuring out. See how it's growing? Let's do that again. As I move, it's not just growing where I'm putting it. It's growing on all sides. And eventually it kind of snaps and it says, you're trying to grab the sky and it grabbed all of the sky. 
It may have not done the best job, um, but I could go back and refine that selection, but it's trying to help me figure out what I'm trying to select. And so if I wanted to select this lady's hair, I could click and I could drag, and I could try to select her hair. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to select the ice cream cone. And so what you can do is you can click and drag, and you can try to get Photoshop to select all of what you want in one pass. But that's probably not the best idea, because eventually, what happened to the sky is it got so big, it took over the whole sky plus some of the buildings. And so what I would recommend, whoops, that is not what I would recommend, Command-D um, or Control-D to deselect. What I would recommend is you click and drag and then stop for a second and then click and drag to add to it because then you just have smaller, more manageable chunks. And if you got way, way too much, you could hit undo if you really needed to. You want to try not to hit undo, as I just said earlier in the same video. But if you had something go horribly wrong, if you had to hit undo, all the stuff I'm doing right now, it would be preserved because I'm doing it in smaller, more manageable chunks. And I'm just going around, I'm kind of pushing out to the outside, trying to get all of the ice cream selected. And so that did too much, but I'm going to leave it for now. You can zoom in so you can see that it, it grabbed too much. It has this background here selected. It got confused. It couldn't tell between this weird part of the ice cream and the side. But we can still go around the ice cream in small chunks. And we can grab and see how it's kind of snapping all the way around the outside. It's OK if it gets too much. I'll show you in a second how to get rid of that. If you push the space bar, as long as you don't have the type tool selected, it changes to the hand tool. And you can come down and. I want to grab the little fingers here. Whoops, went too far. Okay, so I said that when you're using this tool, if it grabs too much, you don't want to hit undo, unless it's like a huge area of too much. Instead, if you push the option key and then you click an area, it will subtract from your selection. And Photoshop will try to learn what it's supposed to select and what it's not. Now in this case, now it's subtracted way too much. So now I have to come back and I have to click the ice cream again. And basically what you want to do is you want to go back and forth until you get what you want. My cursor is way too big right now. I'm never going to get what I want. And so if you use the right and left bracket keys, you can make the cursor bigger on the right and smaller on the left. And so if I go with a smaller brush or a smaller cursor, I can add to this selection until I get what I want. And so right here, that's not part of the ice cream. So if we hit option, we can kind of click and drag in that area until the part that we do not want gets deselected. Over here I need to add, so I'll just brush on top. I miss this Jimmy here too much. We'll use the option key and brush over the edge here. And you can go all the way around the outside and you can use this to quickly make a selection of your ice cream. And then we learned earlier in the lecture that you can feather your selections. And so if we did select and modify and feather, maybe I want to feather it two pixels. It doesn't look like anything happened, but if I was to command X and cut it, it now has a soft edge to it. And so if I created a new layer for the ice cream cone and chose edit paste, ice cream cone is now on its own layer. And because I feathered the edge, it did a reasonably good job of making it so I can't see that there was a background on the original image. Okay, I'm going to choose File and Revert in case I want to use this later in the lecture. Now we're going to talk about the Magic Wand tool. And so you need to find an image where the Magic Wand tool is actually going to work. And so the Eiffel Tower image might work. It's good with solid bands of color. Um, I'll show you on, on this image kind of how it works, and then I'll show you a better image of how it works well. And so if you push and hold that fourth tool down on your Tools panel, you can grab the Magic Wand tool. And then without doing anything else, your settings should be 32 and contiguous. And if you click, you are going to make a selection of, of pixels that match the pixels that you clicked on. I clicked on blue pixels. And so if I cut this, all the blue pixels were selected. But because on my options bar up here, I had the contiguous option selected, only the blue that was touching was selected. Let's do undo, and I'm going to deselect Command or Control D. This time I'm going to uncheck contiguous, and I'm going to make the same exact selection. I clicked right here last time. I'm going to click right here this time. And now when I cut the pixels, 
you can see that pixels that are not necessarily touching the original part of the image, like down here in the bottom right hand corner, they were similar enough in color to the original blue color that they were selected. You might be wondering, well, why, why is there blue that's not deleted yet? And that has to do with the tolerance. So let's undo that again and deselect. So Command Z or Control Z to undo and Command or Control D to deselect. The tolerance determines how, how close or how far from your original color the magic wand tool will select. And so if I made this, let's say, 5, that's a really low tolerance, and I click the same exact part of the image, I only get that many pixels. And see how they're all kind of spread apart? But they were close enough together in range that, that Photoshop picked up the pixels. If I increase it, so 32 is default, if I increase it to, let's say, 80, and I make the same selection, and I'm going to delete so you can see what's selected. If I delete all the stuff I just selected, now you can see much more of the blue has been selected. But in this case, it's not the best option for selecting the blue in the image because it fades into those clouds and there's so many variations of blue that you'd never get kind of a nice clean edge. So let's go back to our Eiffel Tower image. Out of all the images that we're working with right now, it has the most consistent background. It has some it has some clouds and it has some blue showing through, but in comparison to the actual Eiffel Tower, um, we could probably increase the tolerance really far before we start um, selecting anything in the tower. And so when I am trying to get rid of the background in this image, in between the Eiffel Tower metalwork, um, underneath the Eiffel Tower, behind it, maybe I want to replace it with an image that has a, a nice bright background like this one. Maybe I really like this picture but I don't like the angle of the Eiffel Tower. And so I want to use this Eiffel Tower, but I want to have a nice bright background to it. We can use the magic wand tool to make a selection. And I'm going to cut the selection just so you can see what happened. And you can use that. And it went through. And it deleted the pixels in between. Let's zoom out just a little bit. In between the Eiffel Tower. So now you can put an image behind it. Whereas before, in our previous examples, if I go back to the slideshow, Let's go back here. I used some examples. Oh, oh I haven't shown them to you. That, that's why. Well, I'll just show them to you now. I have an example down here where I replaced the background in the image with a layer mask. And in this case, I successfully replaced the background with orange, but everything inside the Eiffel Tower, I haven't been able to replace the blue yet. Maybe I should use the magic wand tool to grab all those colors on the inside. And so let's go back to Photoshop. And so one technique that you could do is you could try to add to this selection. So let's zoom out. So you can try to add to the selection. We can select an area. Let's put the tolerance. Let's put the tolerance back on 32, which is default. And then click an area. So I'm going to deselect Command or Control D. And you can select an area. And if I cut that, you can see everywhere that's now bright blue is where the Eiffel Tower was. You can hold Shift. And you can add to your selection. And as you click, it's going to keep adding all the different colors in the image. And so you can look for areas that are not selected. And you can hold Shift and you can keep adding them. You can also hit Option and, and Remove Areas, so right there, that image, that part right there was not part of what I wanted, um, but then this happened over here. Um, a better option, if we Command or Control D to deselect, would be to find the right tolerance setting for our image. And so maybe you want to make the tolerance 100 and click and see if that gets rid of all the blue in the image. And if we zoom out, you can see that it did. Uh, and maybe it got a little, uh, rid of a little too much of the metalwork, and so you might want to uh, undo and then change it to something lower like 90 and then give it another try. I want to show you something real quick before I finish up this magic wand example. But when you're looking at an image, Photoshop's not going to know the difference between a window and the background if they have kind of the same color value. And so right here in this window, I am going to delete if I hit if I uh, delete this, Oops, if I cut it, let me zoom out here, cancel. If I cut it, Command X, and then I zoom in on it, you can see that it deleted and you'll see through to the background. Well, I don't want to have that. And so what you can do before you 
um, before you delete those pixels, you can remove that as part of your selection. If you hit the Option key and you select those pixels, um, you can remove them. Um, with the magic wand tool, however, um, when you click on it, it's removing all the pixels of that color. And so now all these colors out here are not being selected. And so you may want to use your selection tools in combination with each other. And so I could grab, let's say, my lasso tool. And we can zoom in here. And with the lasso tool, if I hit the option key, you can see that the cursor changed. You zoom in so you can actually see that. You see the cursor changed to minus. And so now if I circle these, they'll be subtracted from the selection. And so if I wanted to, I could come through to the whole image and I could figure out, well, I don't want those pixels there. Let's zoom out here. And you could make it really perfect, which we'll talk about in a future video. But now that you have that, you could save this selection, you could load this selection. I'm just going to cut it, Command-X, and it will fill in with whatever color is your background color on your tools panel.